worship this morning. Your feet, 
begin to shout with our mouths just how good God is. God, you are so good. You're so faithful to us, Father. God, we love you, God. We fix our eyes on you this morning. King Jesus, you're so worthy of our praise. God, come and have it. Our praise is this morning, Father. God, we love you. God, you're so incredible. Oh, we worship you, God. We honor you this morning, God. You're so amazing.
You know, when this song first came out, many people criticized it because it has in it the words, the reckless love of God and how can God be reckless? And he's not. But I listened to the testimony of the one who wrote the song. And he wrote it from the standpoint of you and I. We, we think of God. We know ourselves. I know me. And you know you. And, and we think to ourselves in our humanity. God, how could you love someone like me? How, how could you pour your love out on somebody like me that that to me is reckless not not saying that God is reckless but saying that from a human standpoint how could you love me that way and then it the, the, the words tell us there's no mountain too high for me to shower my love on you there's no wall that is so high that I won't knock it down to get to you. There is nothing I won't do to make sure that you understand how much I love you. Oh, right now, can we just honor the Lord with our worship? Come on. This is a miracle moment right now. Right now, the presence of God is moving into the house. Come on. This is a moment, a moment for you and I to respond this is that moment oh we worship you we magnify you oh we glorify your name mighty god mighty god oh we worship you lord oh we honor you king oh we magnify you jesus oh jesus unfaithful to your family and you've you've held that in your heart you've not allowed yourself to be forgiven though you've been forgiven not only by your family but the Lord and God says this morning if you'll take his freedom if you'll take deliverance and full for pardon and forgiveness you don't have to walk in shame any longer Someone had a bad report physically. And when you received it, you, you heard the words. Listen, I'm speaking to you this morning because it's, it's going to directly speak what you heard. You heard these words. You 
you should have taken care of yourself. You knew the right things to do concerning your health and you didn't do them. And now you will pay the price. And God says to you today, there's not a wall that can separate us. There's not an act of disobedience that can keep you from my love, my protection, my hand of grace, my loving kindness and mercy that is fresh and new each day. Receive your pardon in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Someone struggling with reoccurring sin and it pushes you down and causes you to feel as though you have no audience with God. And God says, what will separate you from the love of God? Nothing. There is nothing too high, nothing too deep, nothing too wide. Oh, pour your life out before God. He'll be faithful. And he'll provide justice, the justice of a right, righteous God to forgive you and to cleanse you. Oh, stand in the righteousness that God provides for you today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. that could be holding us back right now. Anything. I want you to just focus on the name that's above all names. 
the name of Jesus. Put him at the forefront. All your problems, everything that you brought in with you this morning, it's all gonna fall into place when you put Jesus at the center. Jesus, we worship you. God, we put you at the center this morning, Father. God, we give you our all this morning, King. You are our King. We worship you. Oh, we worship you, God. God, we give you this morning. God, we give you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, good morning, church. Why don't you take a second and greet each other and uh, tell someone hi. How you guys doing today? How you guys doing today? All right, that's a little better. Well, welcome to Obi Church. We're so glad that you're here this morning. We've got a, a great day planned for you. Um, so normally, before my dad, Pastor Tom, gets up to, to teach, he tells a few jokes. I thought today I would try a few jokes for you instead. Now, bear with me. I am my father's son, so who knows how good these jokes are going to be. Sorry, that was mean. I'm sorry. Um, all right. Did you guys hear about the guy who invented the knock-knock joke? Yeah, he just won the Nobel Prize. All right. They, maybe they get a little better. All right. So my wife asked me if I had seen the dog bowl. I said, no, I never knew he did. All right. That one's kind of lame, too. All right. Hold on. What did the triangle say to the circle? You're pointless, yep, yep, okay. Yeah, sometimes I wake up grumpy, other times I just let her sleep in. All right, that was just a joke. My wife's not that grumpy, but no, I'm just kidding. All right, this, this is turning into, I don't know, this is making Sunday a sad day, but Yesterday was Saturday. Yesterday was a Saturday. All right, that was lame. Anyways, welcome to OB Church. I think I'll just let my dad stick to the jokes. Um, but uh, we're so glad that you're here today. And if it's your first time, we just want to welcome you. We hope you feel right at home. This is a great place to be, and we're so glad that you have joined us this morning. And we would love the chance to connect with you, get to know you a little bit better. And so if you could do us a favor and make your way to the welcome desk in the lobby after service. Uh, we have just a little gift for you, and there's someone there with, that would love to, to meet you. And so be sure and check that out. And uh, again, we're so glad that you are here. Well, at this time, we are going to pray over our tithe and our offering this morning. And yeah, it's always a joy and a privilege that we can continue in worship to God with this with the giving of our tithe and our offering. And as you can see, there are many ways to give online at oakvalleychurch.org. You can text to give. And you can um, give with an envelope or cash and check. And so if you need an envelope to give, uh, just 
raise your hand and one of our team members will be sure and get that to you. And you can drop that in the offering container in the lobby on your way out today. But uh, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for your goodness to us, Lord, and your faithfulness to us, Lord. And, and we thank you that we can uh, just give back what you've given to us, Lord, and, and trust and know that you're going to use it for your amazing purpose and plans, Father. And we just love you so much, God, and we just uh, praise you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nice try, Drew. <laughs> Today is Memorial Day, uh, Memorial Weekend. It, we often view it as the start of the beginning of summer, uh, but it is an American holiday, and it originally was known as Decoration Day, uh, and it originated in the years after the Civil War. In 1971, it actually became a official holiday, and what today is about is we honor and, and celebrate the ultimate sacrifice that men and women gave serving uh, in the United States military with their lives. Um, and in honoring them, we also honor their families because they too paid an amazing price. I, I can't imagine. Memorial Day reminds me of the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us and I'm glad that the sacrifice of freedom that men and women gave is, at least in my heart and mind, connected to the sacrifice that, that Jesus gave, uh, one for physical freedom, one for spiritual freedom. And, and uh, I know that I speak on behalf of most Americans that we're just grateful, absolutely grateful for what God uh, has honored us with as as Americans, uh, freedom and, and liberty. And in a time in, in the life of, of our history as a nation when freedoms and liberties are being challenged, um, we can look to the past and what God uh, has, has given us and what men and women have given us to protect those freedoms. And so... Uh, as you celebrate with family uh, today and tomorrow, don't forget the great sacrifice <clears throat> that people paid for with their lives so that we can celebrate. I happen to believe that America is not going to hell. We're going to heaven. And we're going to take as many people as we can with us. And we're going to experience all that God wants America and the world to experience, and so I'm excited about the present and the future. So uh, we do celebrate today, Memorial Day. Today, I want to share with you in the Word uh, on this weekend that um, really is something that's been on my heart for a while. Next week, I'm going to start a series that will run through the entire month about growing and going, and we're going to give some real specifics from, from Scripture and as to our church of what God desires and, and what he wants. But for us to grow and go as a church, as the body of Christ, we absolutely must, we must, each of us individually, submit our hearts and lives to the Lord. Anytime I share from Scripture um, there may be something that you may feel like doesn't necessarily apply to you because you've been through that, you've experienced it, you've gained victory in, in certain areas of your life. But know this, when I share, uh, there are always going to be things we all can learn, and perhaps someone is struggling with what you have gained victory over. And so it's important for us uh, to, to learn truths and relearn truths and, and be restored back to uh, the truths that God has set before us. Now, there's, I have a great imagination. I don't know about you, but I like to imagine things. And, and it has served me well in my life. Um, the house we live in is something that I always imagined that I would live in. I didn't really care about the house. What I wanted, what I always imagined in my mind was someday living on a little house on a hill with a long private driveway. 
And so I have a little house on a hill with a long private driveway. I just used to imagine that and and think it. And Joyce and I lived in a lovely home in Redlands. And one day I was doing, uh, we we have cards from uh, those who are first-time guests. And I was visiting at their home, knocking on the door, saying, thank you for coming to church. And I came across uh, what actually was, is now our neighbor, uh, this long driveway. And and um, I thought, I like that driveway. <laughs> and I couldn't see the house from the street down below. And I just thought, boy, I wonder what's up there. And I, and I drove my car up, not sure what I was going to find. You know, and I, I think now, I thought, somebody could have been home and, you know, and here I come. And, <clears throat> but it was what I imagined, and I... And I drove up there, and, and nobody was there. It actually, it looked like nobody was living there. So I, I found out what's going on. I talked to a realtor, and he said, oh, it's getting ready to go up for sale. And so Joyce and I bought this dilapidated house. But it was a house on a hill with a driveway I had imagined. And, and you know, through the years, we've made it our home, and, and we absolutely love it. <clears throat> This property and this building, I, I imagined in my mind, had an imagination for what it could be, and, and, uh, and, and we're here. There's a difference between what you imagine your life could be and what you discipline your life to be. Imagination isn't a bad thing as long as it's coupled with discipline. Imagination without discipline is just daydreaming. Daydreaming encourages the status quo. Daydreaming actually leads to slothfulness and, and, and really causes you to live in an unrealistic world. Imagination that's coupled with discipline visualizes the word, visualizes what God has spoken over your life, what he wants for you. It strengthens your creativity and how you live your life, and it connects you to the vision of God. So I want to show you today how to get through the maze of you, because all of us have issues and challenges. I want to show you how to get through the maze of you and work your life out through Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. We'll read that scripture a little bit later on. <clears throat> Two things I'm going to share with you today, the first of which is a necessary mindset to you living with Christ in you and through you. And it's this, number one, it's living with a spirit of gladness. There's something to be said about living a life with a spirit of gladness. Now, listen, I was born with a serious look on my face, and I never got rid of it. I'm just, I'd have a serious look on my face. I've always been serious. I'm I'm really low-key, kind of mellow. Um, that's just kind of my personality. But I've had to learn through the years by living with someone who was born with a smile on her face that I have to, I have to just kind of prime the pump and, and live a certain way. And actually, the Bible tells us how we are to live this Christian life. In Psalm 100, verse 2, this is the necessary mindset for every believer. It says, serve the Lord with gladness, with gladness. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be the life of every party. And it doesn't mean that you have to wake up with a smile on your face. What it does mean is there has to be within you this internal gladness, this this joy, this, this song on your lips that comes from your heart. We are given the how to serve God here, and it's very simple. Do it with gladness, and a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't live with gladness in their heart. Israel suffered through years of captivity, and as a result, they developed a victim mindset. And and when they went to possess the land, they determined, we're just grasshoppers. We, We can't do this. 
Well, Psalm 126, I'm going to read six verses, shows us the heart of God for us. With the spirit of gladness, we are to serve him with. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, of Israel. Now, just by using the word restoration, that means that they lost something. That they were in captivity. And even though you may go through captivity and seasons of of captivity and difficulty, all of us experience it. We all need restoration. We all need to be restored back to what? The spirit of gladness, living our life with the spirit of, of gladness. Captivity is the state of being held, confined, enslaved, or in bondage. And what verse one tells us is there is freedom. There is freedom. There is a place when you can be like those who dreamed. Those who dreamed. Now we're talking about imagination again. Imagination coupled with discipline can make your dreams come to pass. The dream that God has for you, the vision God has for you. Verse two says, this freedom dream, it involves this. Your mouth is filled with laughter. Your tongue sings songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. Now, the way you serve the Lord with gladness becomes a witness to the rest of the world. Someone is always looking for the negative. Someone who is always seeing that which is not the way they want to see it. And so as a result, they become critical. And if you're not careful, when you see things, not, not through the, the lens of serving the Lord with gladness, but in being critical about things. And, and by the way, most people who are critical think they're doing God a favor. They do. They think they're doing God a favor by pointing out what's wrong in life and what's wrong in people, and we need to get it right and fix it and and bring it back to, to the way things should be. And yet God simply says, you want to serve me? Do it with gladness. I don't need you to be the correction cop. Serve the Lord with gladness. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 1. Israel, says the Lord, if you wanted to return to me, because I have restoration, I want you to dream dreams. I want what you see for your life to come to pass. If you want to return to me, you could throw away your detestable idols. You can deal with the stuff in your life that you need to deal with. But notice it says you have got to do it. You do it. And don't stray away anymore. Verse 2, and when you swear by my name, saying, as surely as the Lord lives, you could do so with truth, justice, and righteousness, then you would be a blessing to the nations of the world. And all people would come and praise my name. This freedom dream is made up of laughter. It's made up of joy. It's, it's made up of a song in your heart. <clears throat> Let's continue on the next verse, verse 3. This is what the Lord says to the people of Judah and Jerusalem. You want to know how you can dream that dream? Again, plow up the hard ground of your heart. Don't waste your good seed among thorns. This is how you serve the Lord with gladness. Plow your heart. Become soft again. Become pliable again. I mean, if you're around a group of people long enough, you can get hard-hearted toward them. I mean, husbands and wives, the, the, the gentleness and the softness and the joy that you found, husbands, in wooing your wife, in winning her, can become hard hearted ground. because it just becomes comfortable to you. 
and, and, and what God is saying in our spiritual lives, <clears throat> if you want to want to be a blessing to people, it's not going to come by, by you criticizing them. It's going to come by you plowing up your hard heart. Don't waste the good seed of God's word by throwing it among thorns. You can have all the information you need in your head, but um, if you don't serve the Lord with joy and gladness, uh, that, that knowledge will not lead to transformation. In Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, <clears throat> scripture tells us this, plant the good seeds of righteousness and you'll harvest a good crop of love. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts. Now is the time to seek the Lord that he may come and shower righteousness upon you. It's interesting that we get into a mindset <clears throat> that we've missed God, and I'm gonna get to that in a moment. We fall away from the things of God or we, we've missed the will of God <clears throat> and we think that, that it, it, it's passed us by. And yet God says, wherever you're at, plow up your hard heart right now for now is the time. It doesn't say if you're young or old. It just says now is the time because he wants to come. If you're 90 years old and you spent your whole life missing God, guess what? Now's the time. Plow up your hard heart. God is seeking you. He wants to come to you and he wants to rain on you. He wants to shower on you. I work for my grandfather. Um, on Christmas tree farm, and uh, it was 10 acres, and um, they, we didn't bring him in. He didn't bring him in from Oregon. He grew his own, and, and um, they were beautiful Monterey pines, and um, he didn't just get out the big things and make rocket ships out of them, you know, by trimming them. He, he, he learned how to, um, we would pull the tips through the years, and so now there's no needles that are brown and and looking like a cone. It looked like a natural tree. These you pull the tips and then they, they would kind of grow and expand and and they were beautiful Christmas trees. People would come from all over Southern California to buy their Christmas tree from him. And my cousin and I worked uh, for our grandfather and um, they would come and we would during December we would saw the tree down and carry it to their car and it was. You know, it was festive and wonderful, Christmas music playing. But always when Christmas was over, I dreaded January and February because in January and February, we had to dig out the stumps. <clears throat> Not only dig out the stumps, then we had to refill the holes and with, with a mix uh, that included blood meal that stunk to high heaven. And for two months, we would smell that. But it was hard work, digging out the stumps, preparing the soil, and then in the spring, plant new seedlings for those that were gone. It was hard work, but if you want freedom, you have to stop thinking about what could have been, what should have been, and what might have been, what's wrong with your life or what's wrong with someone else. You've got to serve the Lord with gladness a joy, a song in your heart. And these things come from the emotional side of your being and they must be deployed. My grandkids get a kick out of me. They laugh at me because uh, I'm not an emotional person. I've never been. I'm, I'm just, you know, very even. I don't get too high, don't get too low. And in my life, I've had a lot of reasons to be high and a lot to be low, but I just kind of try to stay in the middle. Uh, uh, But as I learned some of the truths of of kingdom emotions, especially, I preached on a series on them years ago. Um, As I learned some of the secret, I realized I, I realized I needed to move my emotions more. And so every day, every day, uh, as my grandchildren be my witness, When they come by the house, Poppy is sitting on the couch. And here's what he'll do if they catch me at the right time. I'm going to listen. 
I'm going to find a really sad song on YouTube. Really sad, sad song. And I'm going to listen to it. And my lip's going to quiver. And then I'm going to find something exciting. And I, I like to listen to old worship music. And I'll listen to worship music. And my emotions get moved. They, they, they actually get moved. And, and um, it's interesting that the word gladness from the Hebrew theological dis- dictionary means moving emotion. Moving emotion. Back to Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Do you want to shower a blessing? Look at the very last uh, sentence there, and shower righteousness upon you. Do you want to shower a blessing? Do you need spiritual rain in your life? You got to plow the ground. You got to pull up the stumps. That's a whole lot of work. And you got to plant something new in your life to serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Now, that, that, that just gets you ready for what's next. And I can see that I'm not going to have time to finish this, <clears throat> this word in its entirety. So I'm going to pass through some things. But the second thing that I want you to see here, and I hope this will be an encouragement to you, is a spirit of fulfillment. You got to have a spirit of gladness, but there's also got to be a spirit of fulfillment. Anytime I feel fulfilled in my life, it's because I have outlasted the challenges of life to to see the end of a promise of God, to see the fulfillment of a promise of God. Jesus connected himself to a vision his father had for him. And so everything he did, he prioritized his decisions, his choices, and, and centered them around why he was here and who he spent his time with and where it was going, where he was going. In Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 15, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. John tried to deter him, detour him, basically, by saying this. I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. And John consented. There are two key words here, us and fulfill. Your life is never about you. Your life has to be about us, about us. And because it's about us, we fulfill the plan of God together. So when when you're challenged, I need to leave my challenges or my victories and run to you and help you get back to where you can fulfill what you're here for, us, fulfill. Matthew chapter 4, remember those two words, Matthew chapter 4, begin at verse 12. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and he lived in Capernaum. Now, what we just heard is that he left his hometown, a place he was familiar with, comfortable with, a place that he loved to live in a specific place because, look at verse 14, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah. So he left what was comfortable because there was fulfillment for him to do. Let's go to verse 15. Verse 15 says this, land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light, On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light is dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach. This is what he was here to fulfill. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. He left what he liked to live in a specific place because he had a vision to fulfill. And and he wouldn't even let his closest friends get between him and what he was here to fulfill. 
Remember when Peter came to him and says, hey, let's do it this way? You know what Jesus said? Get behind me, Satan. He, he knew why he was here. He knew what he had to fulfill. But he also knew that he needed to fulfill it with people, people that God had placed around him. So having said that as a little foundation, having set you up, um, let me get to what I want to share with you um, what I, and what I want you to take away this morning. Can you handle just a real quick little history lesson? Um, Abraham came from the Ur of Chaldees, and, and uh, God gave him an assignment. Uh, his purpose on the earth was to establish a family of people who would be called God's people, or the people of God. So he and his wife, Sarah, set out to have a family because God said to him, I'm going to make you father of many nations. Look at the stars, Abraham. See them? That's how many people you're going to father. Look at the sand. See the granules? That's how many people you're going to be the father of. So he looked at his wife, Sarah, and she was old. He looked at himself, and he was old. And he says, okay, let's do this. So he and Sarah set out to fulfill what God had given them. Because remember, everybody has something to fulfill and you can't do it alone. So they had a son named Isaac. Well, they had another one by a slave girl, but that's a whole different story. And their uh, one son, Isaac, then grows up and marries Rebecca. And they do a little better than their dad. They have two kids, Esau and Jacob. How many of you would agree that Look at the stars, look at the granules of sand. You're going to be the father of many nations. How many of you agree this assignment's going a little slow? <laughs> Just a little bit. They have two sons, Isaac does, Esau and Jacob, and they have a sibling rivalry, and Esau leaves in haste and anger, and Jacob is, is so afraid that his brother's going to kill him that he runs to his uncle Laban's house. Uh, and, and so now, you know, this is just not happening the way God uh, envisioned it for Abraham. Their father, Isaac, picked up the assignment his father, Abraham, had been given. And, and he's thinking, well, I'm not getting any closer than dad. Uh, and, and establishing a family of people who would be called God's people. But eventually his son, Jacob, came back and brought with him how many of his own sons? Twelve. Twelve sons. Each of those twelve sons became a father of a tribe. Those tribes then became individual nations. And those nations, each of them, twelve of them, numbered in the hundreds of thousands. Now we're beginning to see the fulfillment of God's original assignment to Abraham of establishing God's people. But here's what I want you to see. How many generations did it take to fulfill God's assignment? It took three. What does that say to you and me? It says, when you think you're done, you're not. It doesn't matter how old you are. When you think you're done, you're not. When you think you're insignificant, you aren't. And when you think you're behind schedule and you've lost ground, you haven't. The only thing that's happening is you are trying to figure out how to make something happen God sowed in your heart so many years ago. And you never saw it come to pass for various reasons. And because you didn't see it come to pass, you then give up and begin to live this life in you. No longer serving God with a spirit of gladness, Because the spirit of fulfillment has not hit you. And and when when you are living your life without a spirit of gladness, and and you're living your life in this cocoon of you, 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 you keep people out 
because you are not living your best you, and you know it. And so you keep people at an arm's length, and where you end up is, is living unfulfilled lives, thinking you'll never get where you were supposed to get, but that is not at all what God is saying to you today. What God is saying to you today is Colossians chapter 1, verse 27, and we'll end right here. The devil cannot stop you. The devil cannot stop you. And God's not your problem. He's the one propelling you, pushing you. You are the difference between victory or defeat. Because the victory's already won on the cross. And what the devil did to destroy mankind, to destroy God's plan for your life, has already been done. <clears throat> Which places you in the crosshairs of victory or defeat. <clears throat> you are the reason why you're either going to be a victim or a victor. What it all comes down to is this. Revelation of Colossians 1.27. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is... Now, here's the mystery that has been revealed to the church, to you and I. Here's the mystery. Here's, here's the reason why you don't have to stay where you are. Here's the reason why you don't have to keep you down any longer. Here it is. It's Christ in you. That's the hope of glory. Christ. Jesus, the Son of God, left the glory of heaven so we could have it. Christ means anointed one. The anointing of God is in you. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 says, the anointing which is God pouring himself out on you abides or lives in you. So Christ, the anointed one, with all of his anointing, which isn't just reserved for evangelists, laying their hands on you, or pastors, Unveiling the word of God before you. No, Christ, the anointed one, has already poured himself out on you. Christ, the anointed one, is in you. And he is your hope. Hope is the promise of God. It's him saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk this out with you. I'm, I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to leave you. You need to grab some a hold of some hope because you can do this. I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to stand with you. But you, you got you to move. You've got to move. You, you can't just keep doing what you've been doing. It's time to move forward. The hope is the promise of God, which is Christ in you. It's the hope of what? Of glory. What is Glory. It's the manifest presence of God. It's what you should encounter during God's, as God's presence filled the, filled the room. This morning, the presence of God came in and filled the room, filled the house. Well, you should have jumped in. You could have jumped in if you didn't. Now, now what you could do is just make it a song service. You can do that. And it'd be good. You know, it'd be good. But what, what can happen each time we come together is the spirit of worship fills the house. And you recognize it. And, and you say, oh, well, I, I got to jump in here. I got to jump in here. And if enough people jump in here, oh, oh, oh. If enough people jump in, if enough people jump in, if enough people say, you know what, I don't care what my personality is, 
I don't care that my personality is like pastors. He's an Eeyore. I'm not a Tigger. I'm just, I'm just not a hoo That's not who I am. I'm an Eeyore, but, but that's okay because you know what? I can get my hoofs up. And I can swing my tail and I can worship God. And I, when the presence of God comes, I recognize it and I'm going to jump in. I'm going to get in. I'm going to get in. <clears throat> that's, that's when you jump in to, to the glory, when it comes and enough people jump in, it's no, there's no telling what God can do in that moment, in your life and in someone else's life. Because in that moment, there's nothing that anybody can do to fix you except what God does. Glory is what you should expect when you, you are in crises and you start to pray. <clears throat> the glory of God, the manifest presence of God is what you should expect. <clears throat> Listen, I, I've seen people through the years as, as a pastor who, you know, are just, um, you know, like me, just very much, you know, stayed, S-T-A-I-D, very much just, you know, this personality that is not all that emotional. <clears throat> but boy, they call me to come to the hospital when their child is sick and their family's in crises. They call me to come to their home <clears throat> when, when a spouse has left uh, and says that they're not coming back. They call me to their home <clears throat> when they've been given a terrible diagnosis by the doctor. They call me to their home and, and, and they're, they're in crises. And I, I start to pray with them. And, and the, 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 the glory of God starts from, I'm telling you what, they don't stay like this when their child's in the hospital. They don't stay like this. They get after it. They recognize this is my hope. This is my chance. This is my opportunity. I'm going to grab hold of God. The hope of glory is Christ in you and you, you responding to this anointed one. The glory of God is what you should expect when the word opens up to you on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night or, or in, in your in your small group, when the, word, the revelation of God, God's word opens up, <clears throat> let me tell you, the glory of God, his manifest presence comes in. <clears throat> and you got to grab hold of it because now it's just not ink and paper. Now it's hitting your heart and it's real and it can transform your life. <clears throat> you can't just sit and say, man, when's this going to be over? <clears throat> Man, it's ten sixteen, Pastor. I, I, I got to get out and get my coffee and my donut, <clears throat> and and get home. But when the word is 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 being revealed, you got to grab it. I mean, you got to grab it while it's it's ready, because because if you don't, I mean, yesterday Joyce, uh, we had all the grandkids over last night. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, we have 13 grandkids, and 11 of them came over. And so Joyce said, would you go buy some Hebrew National hot dogs and buns and organic mac macaroni and cheese? I said, okay. Came home. She says, now would you grill them? I said, okay. <clears throat> and I left them. I left the hot dog. I left a few on the fire a little too long. I didn't, I didn't deal with them when they needed to be dealt with. And at least one of them just became a little black thing that it was the he Hebrew sacrifice <laughs> that uh, was unedible. And I want to tell you, when the revelation of the word is flowing, and you, and you and you know, and you're just thinking about everything but the word, and it's been opened up and laid before you, you all you're going to take away is something that, that that's burnt and unedible. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And when you see Christ moving, when you see Christ doing, when you see Christ filling the house, <clears throat> when you see Christ at work, you've got to jump in. 
That's your hope. That's your hope. Live the entirety of your life with gladness because of what God has done, not because of what people are doing. <clears throat> Live your life with gladness, serving the Lord with joy, a song in your heart and on your lips. And not only that, but when, when it's time to fulfill whatever purpose God has for you in a service or in your life, get connected to it. There are people around you to connect with that you can connect to whatever God's doing in that moment. And in doing that, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe that God is going to uh, be able to move through us in, in an amazing way as a church, a local family. Let's stand together. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for these, your precious people. Lord, I thank you that I've been allowed, Joyce and I, we've been so privileged to connect with them through the years and and so privileged, Lord, to uh, be able to say about them the word us. And together, we begin to fulfill the assignments and the purposes you have for us to fulfill. God, we're reminded today that we're to serve you with gladness. So, we lay our lives before your word today. Hungry for more of you. Desiring all that you are in our lives. And today as we leave from this place, may there be just that spirit of gladness for all the good you've done in our lives. serving you that way we can fulfill together your plans and purposes. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.